and good morning. It's February the 10th, 2022, and I thought we'd have a little end of winter trip round to see what's happening. I'm finally getting to grips with how to look after plants in this climate, which is slightly different. Um, anything against the wall here, as long as I look after them, survive. Well, they so far survived down to minus five which is quite good. Out in the field, no, they don't. So I can grow more exotic plants. And here are a few of my little seeds coming on. These are agapanthus seeds that I planted as soon as they were ripe in the autumn. And I've got quite a few there to pot on, which is great. The remains of my uh, pumpkins, which I'm slowly feeding to my chickens. And then around the corner here are some of the more exotic plants that I've got, which I've covered up with evergreens to, um, to keep them safe. Here is a, a lemon tree. Um, under here, sorry you've got my shadow, <laughs> right, under here, this is... Um, never remember the name, Ju uh, Justicia Carnea, which is quite exotic, um, a bit of lavender there, and under this one we've got an aloe vera, which is surviving okay, and then as I turn around you should be able to see my artichokes doing quite well here, and along the border, right let's go for a walk. I've had a good clear out round the edge of the pond. The yarrow is just coming up. I need to remove some of the bulrushes because they'll just take over in the spring. It's full of fish, it's great. Veg garden. I've got some chard, some leeks, garlic and onions are coming on. I've covered up a lot with tarpaulins to save me a bit of work. There's some sprouts compost heap. In other words, green lizard homes. I've got beetroot, swedes, carrots, and that water butt has got fish in it, which came down the hose pipe. Right, off we go. I've been keeping up with the mowing, keeping my islands defined. And I started strimming in the autumn. I was doing fairly well. And then I wasn't so physically fit. So I had to um, not strim quite as well as I wanted to. Here's another green lizard compost heap. And as you can see, this one, I strimmed pretty bare. I waited until it was really cold so I didn't damage any wildlife. They'd all gone underground. This part, I didn't manage to strim down as far as I'd like to, but I'm just going to see what happens, I think. And what's coming through is the um, bed straw, which is extremely pretty and very much a natural in this field. So I'll just see if it overruns everything, then I might have to in intervene. But as you can see, I didn't manage to strim it as well as I wanted to. The strimming is very difficult because it gets so thick and it's so heavy and then of course you have to rake it all off. My willow here is looking beautiful. That's going to come soon. This has got a penstemon in that's um, very well established, so I'm looking forward to seeing that. It's a very deep red colour. And this is a little bit of catmint, which was bought for me, which is coming on now beautifully. Here you can see this bed straw is just going bonkers. Got a lot of it. Right, these sage plants I grew from seed and this will be their third year 
they look like they're going to pick up very, very well. So. I've cleared along the hedge as much as I could and um, where you can see some batons occasionally, there's an oak tree there which I discovered and I've saved and then over here there's some batons and they're my hazel trees that I've planted. One thing I've been trying very hard to save is the bugle and I think I've, I think I've been successful, I seem to have an awful lot of it it's just when we come into spring I'm going to be very careful to not mow it. I mean the mown pieces are for people if they want to camp and enjoy the the nature and the quiet. A plum tree and right next to him is a little ash tree. I can't separate them, they've, they've attached themselves to each other. And then that plum tree there is just starting to come into blossom. So I'm going to have to keep an eye on him. You can see in the background I've put a couple of tarpaulins down where I'm going to sow some seeds. Maybe try and find somewhere to plant my tomatoes where they're, they've got a lot of air and not too much moisture because last year I lost them all to blight, which was a pain. I've got a few of these choicier cuttings that I've brought on. And in there somewhere is a delphinium. I'm waiting to see if it comes up again this year. I managed to flatten the mole hills and mow yesterday, but um, yes, he's making rather a mess, this mole, or his family are. And then the whole length of this hedge I've planted with hazel, willow, buddleia, elder, a cherry tree, Euonymus, and uh, there's a Nephilie in there somewhere, and um, here I've got that, I think it's called Campsis, that beautiful plant that has the orange trumpets on it, and I'm not sure if you can see, very, very tiny, weeny, evergreen. This choicea, not choicea, yes, sorry, Ceanothus is um, looking very fit and healthy. I'm sure it thoroughly enjoys being here and I can't wait to see it blossom. So I'm just hoping in a few weeks time I'll be able to put it on the film. There's another little, uh, in the background there, another little evergreen I planted. Now these patches have rather extensive nettles and as you can see docks, I have been trying to control the docks a bit. I don't mind a few of them, but they are a bit thuggy. And yeah, quite hard work to try and uh, control. There's a clematis in there somewhere. Be interesting to see if he shows himself. These cardoons are doing very well, really like those. There's some honesty in there, but that's biennial, so I probably won't see much of that. That's a maple, little maple. I've got two or three maples. This is a cornus that's coming up into bloom now. And um, the mahonia has bloomed, which I'm hoping will be a bit bigger next year. And at the bottom of this tree, I treated myself and I'm hoping to see some buds. That is a wisteria. And I want it to grow up my evergreen and pop its beautiful blooms out. It's not a classic blue one, it's this one. This rhododendron I picked up in a sale and I I was so disappointed I thought oh I've lost it but then I had a good look and I can actually see some shoots coming 
So, uh, yeah, yeah, he hasn't let me down. The others, are, they've struggled a bit. It gets very cold in this corner, but they're looking okay. They're, they'll come on. Well, since I lasted my tour, I've managed to um, bring on some fertile eggs that I bought of some Indian runner ducks, and I've got four. So I had to make myself a little enclosure, which I've put them basically around the shrubs I've planted. Here they are. They're very silly, and I love them. Hello. That's Houdini. This is Smokey. This is Baby. And behind her is Cleopatra. And then the shrubs are actually looking quite good. The roses are shooting and the Hebe's looking fantastic, but the duck's been a bit naughty and took her berries off. They're not supposed to do that. And then I'm waiting for these things to start shooting. The other thing that you might not have seen, or you might have seen, I can't remember, are my chickens that I brought on in the incubator. And I've been a bit unlucky in that I had six cockerels and three chickens. And I've ended up with two cockerels, one of which doesn't seem to know he's a cockerel. Um, I'm sorry, he's just too beautiful to put in the pot. I can't do it. So unless they start fighting massively, I'm going to keep him. So getting one egg a day. But they're also extremely beautiful. And they love sitting underneath that car doing, doing up a little bit. I do do a little bit of weeding, but I don't call them weeds. I call them dinners because that's what they are. They're dinners for various insects. It's just some of them are a little bit too invasive. The lavender's looking great, obviously enjoys being underneath this uh, horse chestnut. I've got several bulbs coming up and the uh, alisum is looking okay. This one I tidied up the other day because it was completely overrun with buttercups and I've got quite a lot going on in there but I didn't plant the strawberries in the right place there and this side is much too hot for them so I'm going to have to move them to somewhere a bit more shady. It's perennial fuchsia there that should come out quite soon. I've got, I love the rabbit's ears. And then there's a clematis there. And I've covered that chrysanthemum up. Yes, my cockerel's called Solo and he makes a lot of noise. This rose is supposed to be mauve and supposed to be extremely perfumed. I got it for one euro in Lidl's. So that's not bad, is it? It was being thrown away. Anyway, it's in my garden now and seems to like it here. Aunt Pansy's lovely. I integrate them into the edges of the lawn just to give us that little bit. <laughs> Use that word loosely, lawn. It's just a bit of green with an awful lot of um, chickweed and speedwell in it and clover. This I absolutely love. I can't completely identify it. It smells fantastic. It's a type of holly, but I'm not sure which one. And then on my other plant identifier it said it was a type of berberis, but I'm not sure, to be honest. This little, little budley is coming on really well. I've taken quite a few cuttings off it. it. I grew it from a cutting that was up there. 
in amongst the um, old barn that was um, tumbled down, it had caught fire and we had it um, basically buried. And um, the fig trees had a prune. I've just done that. So I've got a few fig trees here, but this is the biggest one. So. Over here, this peach tree. I had two kilos of really big peaches off it last year and I've managed to prune it back because it had a lot of dead wood. And yes, it's coming into bud, which is great. Well, I've left this ivy, but if it does become too problematic, I'll have to take some more off. And then behind here I planted a rose, which is shooting. Yeah. That's a climbing rose. And then in there, you can just see, that was a cutting that my neighbour gave me off another climbing rose. Um, one is red and the other one is white. So that should look quite nice going up this silver birch. Beautiful. Right, my sage we saw earlier and I spotted in amongst this there's an awful lot of yarrow in here which I love and wild carrots and then I spotted this whole bunch coming up of what I think is uh, California um, yeah Californian poppies I hope so they look good let's hope they survive any frosts that come They've just uh, seeded themselves, they have. So that's rather nice. Standing here. I don't know if you can see this. Let's see if we can. It's rather a beautiful spider's web. Look at that. It's gorgeous. Shimmering in all these colours. Look at it. Wow. Um, this is the Nephlie tree. It's a Japanese Nephlie. And I made some jam last year. And I've made some wine, which isn't. I said earlier, I can grow things against the walls that I couldn't normally. I would have to take them indoors, whereas here we've got an oleander who has survived now two winters, one, one of which I wasn't here. And then I've got the solanum here, which has, yeah, it's gone a bit bonkers, and my passiflora. Underneath there is a camellia, which looks very happy. I only put him in, oh, not very long ago. And the aloe vera is surviving underneath there as well. And then <coughs> over here, Pansies looking, they always like it. Oh, they're so brave, pansies. Those are some Nephlia trees in pots that I've, uh, I've been keeping for people. Got a few cuttings in there. And then behind this, I took a chance and I planted a Bougainvillea straight into the soil. And so far, it's surviving. I can't say as it looks wonderful, but then I wouldn't expect it to look wonderful in February. But if I'm lucky, what I'm hoping is Nick will help me build a frame out of wood that I can then cover up in the winter rather than this uh, rather hodgepodge that I've done. I've also pruned the grapevine properly. So hopefully this year we may have some grapes, who knows. The jasmine loves it against the house and I'm hoping that will reach up and go over the door. So, I think we've done the tour now. There we go. I'll do another one in a couple of months when hopefully we'll have a little bit more to see.